Oh, yay. Perfect timing for Sarah and she's from Beat Snoops. Wonderful. Happy, happy day. This is Kristen Fagan here with a new episode of Free Spirit Beating on the Softlex Company YouTube channel. Thank you guys for being here. It's nice to see a few of you catching us live. How was everyone's weekend? Hi, Lori. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sheesh. Happy birthday to your oldest daughter, Miss Sarah. Hi, Kathy. It looks like you guys had a nice celebration for Evelyn. It was my birthday this past week too. So I got to celebrate my birthday all weekend long. Hey, Susie. Wonderful to see you guys. So what we've got going on this week over at softlexcompany.com is double discount days. Pretty awesome. Hi, Lydia. Happy birthday to all. Thanks, Kathy. Happy birthday. Thank you, Lori. We have double discount days going on, and what that means is all of our beads, we've got about 3,000 beads online, are all extra 20% off because they are already marked down, most of them anyway, are already marked down as 30% off. And that includes beads that are in our closeout section as well as the regular beads and gemstone section. Like I said, most of them are already marked down at 30% off and then you're gonna get an extra 20% off through tomorrow. In addition, we have 10% off of all of our soft flex beading wire. That includes all diameters, lengths, and colors of our original soft flex beading wire brand. And you um, can mix and match and buy, if you buy eight or more spools, you'll get another 20% off. So that's gonna give you almost 30% off of Softlex Beading Wire through tomorrow. So that's a pretty awesome deal. And like I said, you can mix and match all the lengths, all the diameters, and all the colors of Softlex Beading Wire to get that discount. Um, to get up to the eight plus spool discount, you can even include the other Beading Wire brands, but you're not gonna get that extra 10% off on the other beading wire brands. You're only gonna get the 10% off extra on all of the soft flex. So that's the fine, the medium, and the heavy in all the colors, all the lengths. So um, pretty sweet deal. It's a great time to stock up and get a few different types. Um, few, especially if you're running out of certain colors that you like to use a lot, that would be a great opportunity right now. Yeah, totally an awesome sale. It's really, it's really, really cool. So that goes on till tomorrow, August 20th at midnight. You can shop today and tomorrow to grab that deal. And then we always have, um, if you spend $50 and you're in the United States, you'll get the option for free shipping. If you're not in the United States, we do have some international discounts to help with your shipping cost. You just need to create your account on our website, softlexcompany.com, and then email us at info at softlexcompany, all spelt out, dot com, and let us know, and we will um, get your international account set up for you. So no, no coupon needed for any of those deals going on right now. It's just automatic with your retail order, and um, yeah. Pretty awesome. Hi, Pamela. Let me see if I missed anybody. So a couple things going by. Hi, Thomas. So I'm excited to play with patina paints today. Um, Sarah was really nice to gift me some fun patina paints by Vintage. And so I'm gonna um, use some of those today, show you guys how they work. 
and just marry my two loves, painting and beading. How fun! I'm looking forward to that. We're gonna brighten up our designs using some of the colorful patina colors, and then I've got a bunch of softlex colors that match um, those patina paints as well to share with you. Pretty fun. I'm also gonna be using some of our bead mixes. So I've got um, four of our bead mixes that we've got online and they're limited quantity. So once they're gone, they're gone. But as of right now, we still have a few of each of these. So we're gonna play with those and um, yeah, let's get going. The bead mixes are on sale, 20% off. So let me start by showing you what we need. So these are the patina paints. They're by Vintage and they are good for all types of metal. They come in lots of wonderful colors. I've got six different colors to play with today. So we've got the paint. To use those, I've got two small paint brushes. I've got one flat head right there, and then I've got one round. These do have a, um, a relief block that Vintage makes to go with it so that you can show some of the silver. I don't have one of those relief blocks, but I'm going to use um, some paper towels to wipe off some of the paint. So that's an alternatively, you could use that. And then I also have a nail file. I just grabbed a hold of a one of my nail files and you know how one side is sort of like the buffering side? So I use that to buffer a little bit. Um, Sheesh is asking, let's see if these are water-based. Just says permanent fast dry drying paint. I'll read what it says on the back of the package. Um, Vintage patinas are opaque inks specially formulated to adhere to metal. They will colorize findings, filigrees, altered blanks, as well as other metals. And it doesn't say if it is water-based or not on here. It does say avoid contact with skin and eyes and keep out of the reach of children. Made in the USA. For added durability, you can set it with a heat tool. And they do also create a glaze. I don't have the glaze, but there is a glaze that you can use on top of it as well if you wanna give it um, a little more of a semi-glossy finish and seal it a little bit further. Um, it's not necessary, but it's an added step if you want it. And it also can make it look a little more like an enamel coating. I do wash my, br my brushes with water. That is true. Um, thanks, Lydia. So I don't have to use any other like type of solution to wash my, my, my paints off my brush. Sarah's saying, the painting's behind you. Thank you. The hummingbird is fabulous. Yes, that hummingbird used to have a partner in crime. There were two hummingbird paintings, but I have since sold one. So I just have the one behind me now, which um, is one of my favorites. One of my favorites. Thank you, thank you, happy birthday to me. I have my magical crimping pliers and my Softlex professional flush cutters that we'll be using for the beading portion. I also have here some chain nose and flat nose pliers. I'm just using these to open and close jump rings to attach my charms. And then 
Let's see, so I've got a few different wire colors here. So this is the cobalt patina paint. And I think it looks really pretty with a Softlex Tanzanite wire. So I pulled that one out. And then we've got two pinks. We've got um, Fire Opal and Ruby. They're very similar. One is just a little more on the purpley side, like a pinky purple, but they're very, very close. And I think that these look awesome with our pink tourmaline color. You can get away with either one. So this one, the fire opal, has a little, little purple in there. Yeah, of course, right? We have all these colors. We might as well play and match. I've got green opal which I've got some turquoise here for. And this is kind of on the minty side. I might even be able to use... Oh, that looks nice too, actually. Let's see. That is the fluorite. So that is green opal. It looks really pretty with the fluorite. And then I've got Golden Agate, which plays really well with our bright yellow. I also think that that would look great with, with Bone, I bet. That that would be a pretty combination too if you wanted to tone down the yellow a little bit. So the yellow would be fun if you wanna pop up the color and the bone would be nice if you want to tone it down just a little bit. And lastly, I've got opalite. And this one, I pulled out our purple amethyst color. Yeah, totally Harmony Trio. Hi, Dawn. Lisa is saying, does it say it would be good for glass to make designs on glass cabochon? It does not mention glass. It says it's good for all types of metal. So permanent, it says permanent, fast drying for all metals. So I think it's really formulated for metal. I mean, you can experiment and give it a try, but um, it may or may not work. Lori says her favorite purple, so fun. All right, so here's a few examples I did just to play with it so you guys can see the colors here on these butterflies. And this was just one pass through. That was the cobalt, cobalt color. I did get this little wood guy at, um, I think I did get this at CHA at one of those stands. I have their catalog, the company that makes all of these little wood pieces. Isn't that cute? <laughs> so I'm just gonna put those aside for a second and we're gonna play with showing you how to use these paints. Thank you, Pamela, she's gorgeous artwork, thank you. So I've got just here, you can use anything that you want um, to put below you, but I have a little piece of cardboard. And I have a few different charms that we'll just play and I'll show you guys how these work. On the Vintage, Softlex is saying on the Vintage website, it says they create beautiful and durable patina effects and easily clean up with water. So perfect. That's what we needed to know. So I have a couple of different materials here. I've got some silver, some gold, some kind of antique gold brass, 
And then this is more like an antique brass. I'm gonna move these beads out of my way. You'll need a cup of water. So I've got my little mason jar for water here. You'll want to use dry brushes, so we're gonna keep those dry. And then what you're gonna do, I'm gonna just start with the yellow and do one of these bees and then I'll move on to some of these other colors. Is you're just gonna shake it, you hear that little ball rolling around? Just shake it up. And then when you open it, you'll see the paint comes right out of the little tip here. I'm just gonna pour a little bit out. You don't need much. Now the flat head like this brush is good for wider surfaces or when you're just painting over the whole thing. And the round brush like this is better for if you're doing detail work or maybe you're trying to paint, you know, just the wings and not the body or something along those lines. So you just paint your Let's see if I can get this to go down on you a little bit closer. They dry really fast, so you don't have to wait long. I'm just gonna cover that B, and then you'll clean up your brush right in water and then dab it out on your paper towel to dry it. So let's see, let's do this green opal color next. This is kind of like a little minty green. I think for this one, I'm gonna see if I can just paint one of these flowers in the green. that down. And let's add, this is the opalite color, which is like a lavender. I want to dry my brush between colors, clean it and dry it. <laughs> and then 
Let's go with the ruby. Let's go with this one is the ruby color. See what that looks like with it. You can layer colors too. Yeah, and when you layer colors, I think you do one at a time, right? And then wipe it down and then sort of add another. Maybe I'll do that in the background on this one. I haven't experimented with laying down multiple colors yet. All right, so now I'm gonna go back to my B. He's probably dry. And I'm just going to take, oh yeah, that works really well. Just take a paper towel and wipe some of that paint off and let it sit in more of the relief areas. Now, if you had a relieving block, you can then use that to even go a step further. I did use my little buffing side on my nail file. and that lets the metal peek through even more. See how you see the silver coming back? So now let's see how this one's doing. And you could push pretty hard. I'm actually going kind of light. I think I'm gonna go a little harder to get some of these areas that and let me see what happens if I use this guy on top of there. Hi Suha, welcome. We are doing a little patina painting on metal beads. So you'll see how when you use the, the buffer, it really pulls the paint off on the areas that are raised. What color should I put behind this? They dry really fast. What color should I put in the back? I'm wondering, I could do a dark blue, let those colors pop a little bit, or I can do like the yellow, soften it, or I can leave it. But I'm thinking I wanna layer one more color on there. So this one is the cobalt blue. Yellow is interesting. All right, let's go with the yellow. I think I'm gonna use the blue on the moon. So let's go back to our yellow. And this is still um, still wet, which is nice on my on my cardboard. So I don't have to worry about that so much there. I think I may even just take a little bit of yellow and put it in the center 
of this flower too. I could do that in the center of this flower also. See how that looks when we let that dry for a sec. Now I'm gonna try, I think I'm gonna go with this dark blue on the background behind the moon. And you could even go all the way around. Yeah, I'm really in love with this blue. I think this blue is so pretty. So we'll leave that for a minute. Let's come back to this guy. And that feels like it's dry. Lapis color, totally. Yeah, that cobalt blue is very striking. So this little nail file is just me being resourceful, my resourceful self. <laughs> what do I have that I can try and uh, buff out this paint with? <laughs> oh, let's let that, that is really cool. I love how the pink really settled in there, that dark pink. Here, let's hold on, there we go. All right, and let's see how this is doing. So let's see. not just sort of ages it by taking the paint back off. If you wanted a more like enamel feeling to it, I think you could just leave the paint fuller on there. And then if you pop on that glaze, I'm just gonna take this all around the edges. So pretty. You could come back with a little bit of yellow for your moon. Or I think that green would be really pretty too. Now my paint is just starting to dry on the cardboard but that gives you a good amount of time to work. So much fun, Sarah, thank you. <laughs> so much fun. Even this little bee we can come back to and say we wanted to give him a little a little green body. We could come back and layer that on top.
very fun. Very, very fun. <laughs> What's nice is you can have like a whole bunch of metal beads, the same charm or the same type, and then really play around with making your own colors. So now you've got a whole collection of different colors and types to use in your jewelry designs, all based on the one. Oh, that little bee is so sweet. I love the two-tone color. I think I have to make a little partner in crime on that one. I'll do that one later. <laughs> I think this would make really sweet little earrings. So cute. I didn't even get a chance to do a little dragonfly. Let's do one in... I'm going to do one in blue because I saw a lot of blue dragonflies at the lake this week. So let's just do... I'll do two, so I have a little matching set. And I think what I'll do is maybe the purple on top of the blue. That would be really pretty, wouldn't it? Hi, Berlinia. Welcome. So I got to get out to the, we have a lake here by my house for my birthday. And look at how pretty that is. So this was done on the gold instead of the silver. Just that little tiny pop of gold coming through. So pretty. I got out to the lake with my friend on my birthday, but um, it was really, really hot and I ended up overheating. So that was kind of a bummer, but I had a great day until that point. And overheating is no joke. It was definitely um, had me sick the whole rest of the day. But I saw a ton of dragonflies while I was there, and dragonflies are my symbol of the year. So that was really neat. I like to pick a symbol of the year and a word of the year. Dragonflies mean transformation. So there it is with a little bit of that purple on top of the blue on the body. All right, so that was fun. Give you guys a little tutorial on how to use those. <laughs> I'm so neat. I usually wear more patina than I place on the metal. Well, hey, take a look. <laughs> I'd say I'm pretty, uh, not too bad, but it's definitely gets on your fingers. So if that is something that bothers you, um, you could wear a pair of gloves or something, but I think this will come off pretty easy. Yeah, it's already coming off just wiping it. So it'll come off pretty easy. I'll just wipe it with my paper towel and see. It'll probably stain on my fingernail a little bit longer. You're welcome for sharing. It was a lot of fun. I wanted to, uh, gave me a chance to play with my new, my new creative paints. So now I'm just gonna do some simple stringing with the butterflies that I did in all the different colors. 
This particular one is the blueberry pie mix. So that is using this guy, the blueberry pie mini mix that we have online. And actually, I didn't get to use these little beads here, but look at these beautiful silver beads in there. Those would be awesome to patina. There's also some really cute little owls. Suzanne says, thanks, I just ordered some patina paint yesterday. Oh, perfect timing. Now you have something to, you have something to look forward to when it comes in the mail. So exciting. So we'll move these guys up. And I strung this on the Softlex Tanzanite wire. So all these beads are from the blueberry mix. I've got a little bead stopper holding it in place. So let me see what else we've got here. This is the Saraswati bead mix. And there's a lot of gold in this one, but there's so many of these really hot pink um, beads that I think that'll go really well with one of these pink butterflies. I'll show you these colors up close just so you can see they're really similar. Um, I'm not even sure if I can tell which is which now. This one has a little bit more purple in it. So that one would be, so the one on my right is the fire opal. And the one on my left is the ruby. I'm gonna use the fire opal one. I'm just gonna take out my bead mat here so that I can dump out this mix. And which beading wire did we say goes with this? Let's see. I was thinking pink tourmaline That would really play up the pink, but I could even do the purple because they've got some of these dark purples in here to play with. So maybe we'll do sort of like a pinky purple. I think these mini mixes are my fave. They are great for the wire pendants I make. Nice to have a coordinated variety. I agree, it makes beading so much quicker when you can just open up a bead mix and have a whole bunch of options that go together. Yeah, I think the purple would be a nice contrast with all of that pink. So I'm gonna cut out about 24 inches. And actually, you can't even just string right on the spool so that you don't have to have a bead stopper on the other end. So maybe I'll start that way. And just make a few Purple with that coral is a crazy great luck. Yeah, I think the purple and the pinks are gonna be really pretty together. I'm feeling girly with this one. <laughs> And get a little purple one in there. A 
Look at how cute these elephants are. I haven't made anything with them yet. I can't believe I haven't. As they are adorable. I'm gonna stay away from the gold because my charm is silver. So I'll just leave all these little gold accents for now. But you can patina them. If you wanted to patina them with purple or pink to match the charm, you could probably, all of these little guys in here, you can definitely patina. So that's kind of fun. Create a whole nother, let's see what we got here. I put this on the right way? I did. Anything with texture would be awesome. Exactly. Now I'm going to be looking at all of my <laughs> all of my bead, my metal beads and my stash to say, "Ooh, can I paint that?" Can I paint that? <laughs> I was thinking too that when you have a charm set up like this and you do a bunch of different colors, this would make great wine charms, wine glass charms. Um, I was kind of thinking that yesterday because I had all of the same charm and I just did them in six different colors. And that would make a great set. Berlinia says, I use purple with fall shades all the time and summer sunsets, love purple and winter whites and purple with soft blues, oh, and spring and purple all over the place. I see a theme. Purple is almost like a neutral for you, huh? It goes with everything. I like having colors like that. That's like green for me. Green's kind of a neutral for me. I'll stick it with anything. Yep, olive too. And you know what olive is really pretty with? Purple. <laughs> olive is gorgeous with purple. I love those two colors together. Let's see, do I have any more of those? No. Let's. I think I'll stop there on that side and I have to, I'll put a bead stopper on this end. I beat it up a little bit longer over here on this side. Green is a migraine soothing color for me, especially soft sagey green. Is it? That's really good to know. So when you say it's a soft color for you, does that mean you like try to bring that color into your space when you have a migraine. How do you incorporate that color? So this, I just added a couple extra, I think on this side. I'm asking cause, um, my husband is a migraine sufferer, and so I'd be curious how, how you use that color.
could make a killer safari hoop earrings with that set. Ooh, that sounds really pretty. I adore hoop earrings. Oh, you did a room in that color. There you go. So that's where you would go to help soothe your head. So I'm gonna stop there and put a little crimp on each side here so that you can still see the beading wire through the back. I'm gonna do that with the other one too. If I can just get this bead stopper. I'll just grab another one. One of my kids gets migraines too, but he doesn't have them quite as often. I think my, um, my son's migraines are triggered more from allergies. Finding out your triggers is so important, right? It makes all the difference in making, hopefully having them less often. All right, so just a sweet, simple little necklace in all pinks and purples. And then this one, I use those beautiful dark blues and tanzanite beads from the Blueberry Pie Mix. So to finish it off, I'm gonna have a couple of crimp tubes. I'm gonna grab my two by two millimeter crimp tubes. And I'm gonna grab a little scrap of purple wire. I'm gonna take off one of these bead stoppers. Slide down the crimp tube to my beads and add in this little extra piece of wire. And why I'm adding this extra piece of wire, I'm just adding the extra piece of wire so that there's two wires going through the crimp. Why I'm doing this is because I want to use my magical crimping pliers to turn my crimp tube into a little bead. And the magical crimping pliers like two strands of wire. And I'm actually gonna straighten this out first. Make sure I'm in the center of my strand, which I'm not. Okay, so now that I'm in the center, I'm gonna take this bead stopper 
I'm gonna pop it down here next to my beads to hold those in place while I crimp this side. So like I said, I've got my crimp tube I've already strung on. I've got my little extra wire that I'm folding in there. So I have two pieces. And then here I'm using magical crimping pliers which have a notch on each side. I'm gonna place that crimp tube in the center of that notch just like that. Give it a squeeze, a nice squeeze. It's gonna pinch your corners. You're gonna turn it 90 degrees, place it back in that notch, squeeze it again, and then you're gonna rotate. Roll that crimp tube around in there, keeping it inside the little socket a few more times, and then your tube will form into a little bead shape. Yeah, we've narrowed down so many. We've had to do like a food journal, narrow down all sorts of things that he was eating. My husband to figure out what was triggering. That's interesting though that um, Peanuts and cashews are a moldy food from growing from their growing method. That's um, that's interesting. I didn't know that. So we do a food journal. I think it took us like a year and a half to narrow down a few of his really major triggers. So now I've got a little crimp tube that turned into a bead that's holding my beads in place on one end. And now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other end. It's such a personal journey to know what it triggers for everyone, you know? So it definitely, the food journal makes a huge difference. And then we're gonna do it again. Yeah, it totally looks like a ravioli. So once you crimp that first crimp bee, the first pass on your crimp tube, give it a good squeeze. You're gonna pinch your little corners and it'll look like a ravioli. Turn it again. And then keep going around and around. Make sure that's on there. Pineapple too, you love pineapples, I know. Pineapples are tough for me, I love pineapples, but I'm sensitive to them. I can eat them, but just in a small, small amount. I love ravioli too, <laughs> yes. We're all getting hungry for lunch. <laughs> and there you have it, just a sweet little necklace with your colorful butterfly. And then you just add your clasp on the end. I've got a few lobster claw clasps here. Let's see. You could find lobster claw clasps at softlexcompany.com. They come in like three different sizes. I think this one's the smallest size. No, this is the medium size. So that's a 12 millimeter. And this one I think is the 15 millimeter, which is what I'm gonna use today since that's the only one I have in silver at the moment. Some say chocolate can be a trigger. 
Mine were estrogen related, went away after menopause. Oh, so there's something to look forward to. <laughs> we had a very interesting one with my husband. His was xanthan gum and it is in everything. So that was a really interesting find. That is, um, he gets the worst when he has xanthan gum. He has the worst of all the migraines. He can tolerate some of them, and those are the ones that are the really bad ones. And it's in, it's like a natural um, preservative, I guess, of some kind, or thickening agent, but it's all natural. So it's in all sorts of organic, all natural foods, every dressing you can ever imagine, any type of barbecue sauce, all those kind of things. So sauces are a big one. So I just put on my two millimeter crimp tube. I slid on my lobster claw clasp and go back through the crimp tube. And it was such an obscure one. Everyone's always like, how did you find that out? And it really was just detective work for like a year, having to look at every single thing he ate and all the packages until we found the, the culprit. It's in everything. It's hard, it's in, can, and um, it's also weird, like it's in cream cheese, but not all cream cheese. So we found like certain types that he can have that don't use that, instead use like a guar gum or a different type of gum for thickening. So you really have to like look it used to take me hours upon hours to food shop because I'd have to look at the back of every single thing I bought until we got to know which products um, were good and which products weren't, you know. My goodness, I'm just trying to get this little piece of tail here. There we go. Just clip off your tail and you have a nice strong connection to your clasp. And then on the other side, you can either choose to like attach a jump ring the same way, or you can just make a little loop right with the soft flex. Just like that. Yeah, that's another one. Monosodium glutamate is totally another one. That one doesn't always hit him as hard. He can kind of get away with it sometimes. It's funny how, you know, certain triggers are more mild than others. And now I just have a little loop there that I can connect right to my clasp. If you were gonna put a jump ring there, I would suggest a closed jump ring because an open jump ring may have the wire, you know, your wire may slide out of it. Whereas if it's a closed jump ring, you are definitely all good. So there's that sweet necklace. And then I'm gonna just do the same thing to this one off camera and then I'll share them both in our VIB group. And maybe I'll make a couple more while I'm sitting here because <laughs> I've got a few more colors to play with. It's so true, then they change their formulas and you have to kind of check it all out again. That makes it tough on us. I'll have to fix that later. Ooh, so that was so much fun, guys. I'm so glad that you joined me today. And we got to paint together. Let me turn you back up and... Oh, I wonder if this one will fit me, actually. Let's try. The one we just made. So sweet.
I could even make it a little bit shorter. I think it would be nice as up there. Shorten it up just a little bit more. Matches my top. I didn't even mean for that to happen. <laughs> Isn't that always the case? I, I know that whenever I sit down to bead, I tend to make stuff that match what I have on. And I've noticed that when we go to um, events or trade shows and we do demonstrations, and we usually have like a couple of different um, packages people can grab to make stuff with, most of the time, probably 80% of the time, people pick up something that matches what they have on that day. The colors flow through you, totally. Oh, you're Kim. You missed, I didn't even realize, well, because of your name on YouTube, I have to remember that it's Kim. <laughs> nice to see you. Yeah, I know you're one of our Facebook friends over on the VIB group. So what do we have going on this week? We've got, um, we have a Facebook Live jewelry demonstration on Wednesday, August 21st at 1 p.m. Pacific time. I think that's going to be with James. We have some, um, a new product that I think he's going to be showing you guys. Um, so that will be on Wednesday. Then on Thursday, we have at 2 p.m., James is having a video premiere for a new wire craft, Softlex craft wire tutorial. And he loads the video up. It goes live at 2 p.m. for the premiere. And James will be there to chat with you guys live. So that's always a lot of fun. And he did a little teaser this weekend in the VIB group. So if you caught that, um, pretty excited about that project. And then we've got um, me here again next Monday at noon Pacific time for another episode of Free Spirit Beating. And then next Wednesday is our Unicorn Sparkles um, kit reveal and design challenge. And that's at 1 p.m. on Facebook. That is Wednesday, August 28th. So we're very excited about that. She saw his pick. Oh, it looks so cool. I'm very excited to see how he makes um, that project here on this Thursday. So if you're in our VIB group and you have the Tucson Sunset Design Kit that you purchased last month, um, your deadline to post your designs is tomorrow. So just wanna remind you guys of that. If you're not in the VIB group on Facebook, come join us. It's a great community of beaters and creatives. Um, we share all sorts of fun stuff and we do monthly kits and challenges and it's just a great a great place to great place to be and check in throughout the week for inspiration. Uh, if you want to get involved in our next design challenge, it's the Unicorn Sparkles kit and we're currently 80% sold out so there's still a few left that you can grab um, but we're getting really close to selling out on that kit um, which are totally awesome. Yeah, totally, totally awesome. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up. Um, it's nice to know you guys are enjoying it and I believe it also helps with us being uh, seen in the YouTube community when we've got likes and views. Um, so that's always really helpful. And be sure to visit us at softlexcompany.com for shopping. Sign up for our email list. You'll get um, regular inspiration, tutorials, articles, and be updated on all of our new products and sales that we've got coming out. So it was awesome to be here with you guys today. I look forward to seeing you guys online all this week. And I'll be here again next Monday for a new project. Have a great one. Talk to you guys soon.